Well, in any case, uh, something to be aware of when you get into the wire or the wireless. What am I saying? When I when you get into the cordless game. All right, welcome back to the workbench, everybody. Uh, today I have a special treat. I have the battery from a um, from a Mila HX1 Triflex. So we're going to disassemble this guy today. Now the Triflex is a relatively new machine for Mila. It is their new bagless cordless upright, and uh, they're really putting a lot of weight behind it now. I wanted to do a video about the actual vacuum itself, but every single time I get them into stock, they go out of stock again, and then they're on back order. Uh, Mila has been hit pretty hard with the um, with the supply chain issues here in uh, 2020, 2021. So, um, so they're slowly coming in. Eventually, I know that uh, you know demand will uh, you know supply will catch up with demand and we'll be able to do a video on one of those but in the meantime i do have one of these battery packs so since you guys seem to like battery pack videos i thought i would go ahead and disassemble this guy and we'll see what's going on so it looks like we actually have um one two torx head screws and i think there was probably one hiding behind a blank right here so essentially three torx head screws one interesting thing about this particular battery is It'll focus that this is not made in China, which is really kind of rare. You can see right there, made in Romania. Um, so this uh, particular battery pack is made for Mila in Romania by Varto, which is a uh, European battery manufacturing company. So very unusual not having a lithium ion battery pack coming out of China. To my knowledge, this is the only stick vac available in the United States with a Varta battery that is not made in China. So really interesting. Um, and it is also, to my knowledge, the HX1, to my knowledge, is the only vacuum, uh, the only cordless stick vacuum that is not made in China as well. It's made in Germany. Now, what might be available in your region if you're outside the United States, you may have cordless stick vacs that are made places other than China, but for here in the US, it's either Malaysia with Dyson's or China for everything else. So this is uh, this is unusual. So let's go ahead and we are going to see what size fit we have here. It looks like we've got a T15. So yeah, so what I'm feeling here is that this guy is not going to come out. So what we need to do here is we actually are going to need to, um, we're actually going to need, I think, to drill out this little blank right here. So let's give that a shot. So why do they put a blank in there, you ask? Well, the reason they put a blank in there is that they want to know if you've tampered with the battery. So what I just did would void any warranty. However, this particular battery pack was replaced under warranty for one of our customers. So, um, which is odd, uh, you know, jury's still out. I've sold a bunch of these. We'll see how many of them come back with battery issues. I think this was a fluke, to be honest with you, or like maybe an early production bugaboo.
let's take a look at the construction here. We've got our spring-loaded, um, got our spring-loaded clip mechanism here, and this is built into the brace that holds the batteries. Very interesting design. So that kind of all holds it in place. So to get that out, it looks like we kind of have to pry this up and out from each side. Again, being mindful. Yeah, that's the problem. It's gonna, it's gonna want to push the other, there we go. All right, cool. So there's our shell. Here is our main battery pack with the little clippy clips on the side here. You've got your uh, charging port right here. Um, got your leads coming into the circuit board. Circuit board looks pretty clean. A lot of very small soldering, but um, looks pretty doggone clean. I'm happy with that. I would not hesitate to say that that's a pretty solid build. In terms of the batteries, let's look at what we have here. There was one that was showing on, there we go. Okay. can see that so it says uh us 18 us 18650 vtc 5a Murata cell so Murata purchased sony's cell, uh sony's battery division so what was once a sony battery the vtc 5a is now produced under the Murata name uh, which is another japanese company take those out right there so uh, really good cells. I'd say that this circuit board looks pretty solid. Um, I'm not gonna take it apart and look at the other side because I'd have to clip all these leads. And I just don't really feel like doing that. But uh, you know, looking at this side, this is very high precision. Um, this is some very high precision work. Um, looks like it was manufactured May 14th, 2020. Um, yeah, looks pretty solid. So all in all, I would say very clean, nice leads, um, separate charging section right here, and has seven VTC 5As. Now, I've had a couple of jokers show up in the comments that say like, dude, those aren't VTC 5As, you can't buy those. Every, all of them are fake. They're all fake if you're a vapor, okay? So if you're a vapor and you're buying VTC 5As from like some random website, they're very good chance that they're probably fake. But when you are a company like Varta or you're a company like Dyson and you're buying tens of thousands of these at a time, you're going directly to the manufacturer. These are legit cells. Um, so you can be pretty much guaranteed that whatever comes out. Oh, there's a spring in here. That's <laughs> what was making the rattling noise. But whatever comes out of here is going to be genuine. And that's really true of any OEM battery. Um, so pretty much uh, 100%. So in any case, very interesting battery. Um, I'm a fan. I like it. I like the way the connectors work. I like the way that these are held in. This is a pretty solid little uh, piece. Again, board looks very clean. The only thing, and time will tell on this, the only thing that I would probably say is that the board is pretty close to the cells. I would have liked to have seen for heat management, I would have liked to have seen that just a little bit higher um, raised off of the um, raised off of the cells themselves um, you know so we'll have to wait and see whether or not that ever becomes an issue it's a little bit a little bit tight but we'll, we'll see time will tell um, again I don't know why this particular unit went bad let's see where these leads come off so we've got positive over here, negative over here. So let's test that. No voltage. And 
no voltage. No voltage. Just a little bit of voltage, not much. So what actually happened to this guy, I would guess, is that the um, is that the uh, charge controller stopped working. Um, so what it did is it completely dissipated the cells, which for lithium ion is not a good thing. That'll pretty much ruin them if you take them all the way down to zero, but there's no voltage coming out of this. So something went wrong, it completely self-discharged and the charger wouldn't bring it back. Um, so if it would even charge at all. So that's probably what happened on this guy. But anyways, uh, we got the customer set up with a new one under warranty and they are good to go. Again, I I've said it before and I'll say it again. I do these, these autopsies on batteries just because it interests me. But anytime that you have a battery operated machine, doesn't matter whether it's made by Miele or Dyson or Simplicity or Bissell or Shark, it doesn't matter. Even if they're using a very good quality cell, which Miele is, even if they're using a very good quality manufacturer, Varda, which Miele is, um, there's always going to be room for error when it comes to lithium ion batteries. So you're opening yourself up to more reliability issues. Um, and it's luck of the draw. Again, this pack has seven cells in it. So because it has seven cells in it, in this case, it looks like the PCB went bad, but you know, in other cases where, um, in other cases where you have one cell go bad, Sometimes, depending on how which cell goes bad and how it's all laid out, whether in parallel or series, it can just break the whole chain and the battery dies, right? So, um, there, you know, all it comes down to is one of those seven going bad at any time and you're out of luck. So, in any case, uh, something to be aware of when you get into the wire or the wireless. What am I saying? When I when you get into the cordless game. Um, you know, that, that is just something that comes with the territory and you have to be okay with that to play the game. So in any case, that is a complete dissection of the, uh, Mila HX1. Sorry, I keep looking up here at my monitor, but I'm supposed to be looking down here. Uh, this is a complete dissection of the Mila HX1 Triflex's battery, uh, manufactured in May of 2020. And uh, yeah, so if you like this, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, subscribe, click the bell so that you know when I post new videos. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, post them down below. We'd be happy to talk with you about them. And uh, if you would like to get a hold of a Triflex or you're having trouble finding one, let me know and I may be able to scrounge one up for you. So in any case, I really appreciate you watching. We'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.